It's been a while. It's time to finally make a viable magic build. What now? Sorry to interrupt, old man. What are you going to see now? <laughs> what do you mean by a viable? Magic is totally overpowered in this game. This sounds a lot like you're making useful data. Oof. Grandson, I don't feel so good. Ah, oh, other spoilt video. Well, since I'm here, and speaking of dark mages, we might as well get the yearly quota for useful data out of the way. So it's finally time to devise a low level anti invader mage dark bead PvP build. And some more words. And no, I am not just shamelessly reusing this joke. I'm remastering it. Alrighty then. This video is going to be split into three parts. Understanding the enemy, a counter build, and a demonstration. Click on any of these headings to pause the video, since YouTube removed that feature. Or, for a limited time only, you could use these time codes too, I guess. And with that all out of the way, let's get started. This is a sorcerer. While they may seem small and harmless now, they are easily drawn to hexes. Well, hexes is technically incorrect, since in this game there is no dark damage, just look at the dark hand. I mean, there isn't even a dark damage or dark defense stat. So all hexes are resisted by magic defense. But then again, technically, the dark hand does do occult damage, but let's not get into all that stuff anyways. The conversion only takes some flashy headgear, a staff, and one ring to get some ridiculous damage. On the left, we had stock mage with nothing added or changed. And on the right, with the new items, we can clearly see we are now 1.7 times more powerful and also unfashionable. Seriously, I love that dorky mage beret. While pretty OP, it wouldn't be Dark Souls unless you added Dark Bead. It's an endgame spell that comes with 6 charges, needs only 1 attunement slot, and only needs 16 int to use. That int requirement is why you meet Dark Mages in all soul levels and areas of the game especially early game, and I am so sorry, but I needed the footage. Sorry. Now, to its credit, Dark Souls does try and balance matchmaking in two ways, and this will be important later. One is to only match you with people of similar weapon level. Simply put, it's plus five, minus five, your converted weapon level. The problem is that all catalysts are treated as weapon level zero, with one exception. But let's not get into that. The other matchmaking check is so level. I don't quite believe this from the official guide, since all the weapon scaling down here is incorrect. But the basic rule is you can always invade upwards by a shit ton and downwards by 10%. Now, the sorcerer starts at so level 3, and the earliest they can make their build is... So level 4. Oh my. All they have to do is level int once, a dark bead. With this kind of damage, you can one-shot normal soul level 120 builds, providing most of them hit. Sure, getting more stats is nice, but effectively the build peaks here. This also gives them the widest invasion pool possible. So, what is the counter? So, time to design the perfect counter build. And since people would ask if I didn't look into this, let's look at the best magic resistant shields in the game. These are the three best, but terms and conditions apply. So let's get our resident bud Tokia and see how they all do. And on the first one we can see that it's unusable. Now this one is the one that had the best uh, fashion. And finally this one actually works, but only barely. I guess the life lesson is you might think you will be able to endure it, but odds are you can only take two beads, maybe three beads, out of push. Anything more than that will leave you feeling hollow. You see, the joke is that both dark beads and inner beads will leave the receiver seriously butthurt. So forget all the stuff and just, you know, forget you ever heard it. Here is a guaranteed way to never lose again. 
Watch time back a guarantee. Step 1. Pick the Paro and the Master Key. Since who doesn't pick the key? Step 2. Have a friend drop you the most powerful level 0 weapon in the game. The Demon's Catalyst. Oh, I missed a step. Step 1.5. Get a friend. Good luck staying at weapon level 0 and getting this weapon otherwise. Step 3. Use the key to get some gear. Collect Havel's Ring from Havel. The Wolf Ring that gives you 40 poise. And you can collect the Knight Set for even more poise. And before you finish typing that comment, don't bother with the Leo Ring. True, it does make Frost counterattacks do a whopping 40% more damage. And the Staff does do Frost Pokes. But it only boosts physical damage and the Staff mostly deals in elemental damage. So the other rings will work better here. And the last and hardest step. Level Dex once. But don't tell anyone you did that. And that's it, we're all done. You have all the damage and poise you will ever need. You can even two hand for more damage. So, what is the battle strategy for those dark mages? I would tell you, but first we need to talk about soul levels. Again, the earliest a dark bead build can exist is soul level four. The counter build is finished at soul level two. And as I'm sure you've noticed, this is how the counter build works. This is how you'll never lose ever, ever again. Since you're such a low level, you cannot be invaded by dark mages anymore. It is a counter build, because simply you would never encounter them. This build does come with some caveats though. You won't want to interact with any PvP soapstone, since dark mages can be lurking inside there. When you're invaded, you're completely safe. Now, dark moons can invade, but only if you have sin, but since we don't invade, that won't be a problem. So for that PvP, just become human, buy the dried thing of the merchant, Welcome. and now you can fight off low level invaders to your heart's content. Also give yourself a pat on the back, unlike those filthy mages, you're simply not one-shotting weaker and newer players, but fighting other dedicated invasion builds. And there we go, just sit back and wait. And also, uh, let me fast forward this a tiny bit. Huh. You would think in the opening week with numbers like this, it would be a bit more active. If this takes much longer, I might have to rename this video How to Make a Bloodborne PvP Build. Thank you very much, I'll be here all week. and maybe even two weeks. Day 15. Give it up for day 15. So there we have it. It's a perfect counter build because you won't encounter anyone at all. All right, let's put this build to the test. Rather than be invaded, let's invade the guilty because I'm really feeling it now. Oh no, oh, was it her? Alright, no talking, I have to focus.